in Turkey. They weren't coming from Syria. They were already safe in Turkey. They were fleeing as economic migrants. So, yes, it's incredibly tragic. But why are we being manipulated to think that this young boy died as a result of the West's immigration laws when his family was safe, relatively wealthy for the region? They had um, relatives in Canada as well. And they staged the body so they could get the best uh, photo for the emotional man manipulation. Just like the, the babies in the incubators. Yeah, they always use dead kids to rest their propaganda on. Then you had the, the guy and the, his wife and young child in Hungary. You know, they were on the train tracks wailing and crying. We saw those photos in the newspapers. What you didn't see in the video moments before that was that he physically pushed his wife and kids onto the rail track to create that photo op of look at these poor, desperate immigrants when he created that situation with the police in the first place. So we're being completely manipulated. And again, 90% of these migrants are claiming to be Syrian, and they can't prove it. You've got Syrians coming out in the New York Times today who said, an actual Syrian migrant, I am Syrian, a real Syrian. Here we have Pakistanis, Afghanis, Iraqis, they all throw away their papers and claim to be Syrian. So they're finding all these discarded ID cards from Pakistanis and Bangladeshis in places like Macedonia, because they're not refugees, they're economic migrants. They're not fleeing from ISIS. They're not fleeing from war or persecution. They're fleeing to get benefits and to get a higher standard of living, which we're going to have to pay for as taxpayers, while Gulf states like Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates take zero, zero refugees, despite many of those countries being directly involved in funding and arming the jihadist rebels in Syria who went on to join ISIS that caused this problem in the first place. So it's all about imposing this on the West. The European governments have rolled out the red carpet to get that power back in the hands of the EU because the EU is being rejected continent-wide for the past three years. That's right, years. stay there. These people being brought in are nothing but socialist mercenaries and the cloud Piven strategy. And it just shows you the hardcore evil, evil of the people running our governments. What happened this morning, Alex Jones here back live, is I stayed up last night doing research. I was up till like 11 with Buckley shooting videos. And then I was up till about 1 doing research. And then I got up again this morning and looked at all the news and I read this LA Times article where they just flat out say we're going to close half the roads and only let robot cars on them. I know the whole backstory of that. So it's not just they're going to close the roads. I know the whole story and how Rahm Emanuel's brother's making billions off of it, and how it's all a scam, and we're just being conquered. I mean, if they can foist Obamacare on us, owned by foreign banks, to double and triple prices, well, of course they're going to just bring in giant hordes of illegals. I mean, I used to hear six, seven years ago, the right wing claimed that Muslims were telling British people, you know, to not have their women wear dresses or whatever that were above the knee, and now... I've basically been in England and seen it for myself. It's that Westerners are so passive now and so wimpy that foreigners just literally think we're here to serve them. And I've been in England before just videotaping Big Ben. This is actually on tape. And this guy comes over, a Muslim guy in his car with his family, gets out and says, don't tape me. What are you doing taping me? And I, and I guess he thought I was going to cower down, and I just started yelling at him. I told him, go to hell. I said, I'll do whatever I want. But it's just... Paul, you live in England, you live under this. I'm not even against these people, except they've been encouraged and pushed that, that we somehow owe them. It's the entitlement. I can't go to Saudi Arabia and get something free. If I go preach the gospel there, I'll be executed. Why is it that, that the people running us ha hate our tolerance and that we're so good, tell us we're so bad? Yeah, I'm not even upset now when I watch MSNBC criticizing America and saying how bad we are and how bad Christians are. I just realized they're the most evil, collaborating filth I've ever seen in my life. I mean, who are these people, Paul Watson? I didn't know they stacked crap that high. I'm sorry. Well, they're control freaks, and they know that if they bring in these hordes of immigrants who, have, who don't cherish liberty, have no history of it, have no interest in defending it, then they will vote for big government parties. So they will collect more power in the hand of these leftist collectivist parties 
the more of these people they bring in. People who have done the maths with this Germany situation say that once these half a million asylum seekers every single year are brought in, within a few decades, they're going to have like a quarter of the German population is going to be immigrants and sons and daughters of immigrants. So they're creating a huge voting block for these big government parties who are just going to vote for bigger and bigger government. And then big business loves it as well, of course, because they can get the cheap labor. They can drive down the wages of everybody else. So it benefits them in that way. And then you've got a situation with the media where it's all, oh, look at these poor Syrian families and these children. And undoubtedly, some of them are. But they're not, they're not showing any of these videos. They're not talking about how on the border of Italy and Austria a couple of days ago, these migrants were yanking old ladies out of a car to steal the car so they could get to Germany. Paul, not Paul we're going to do this. I've asked the crew to do it, but they're so busy we haven't. There are hundreds of videos at the tunnel and at the ferries from France with the robbing, the stealing, the carjacking, the beating, and the arrogant, crazy-eyed hatred of these illegals. Instead of feel bad, which I'm not saying they should, and, and, and feel like they're not culturally dominant or they're not wealthy. Instead, there's a hate of the West. You can see it in a lot of their eyes. And most of the immigrants I've seen so far from the Middle East are pretty cool, hardworking folks in my experience. This is a new wave. You live in it every day. Why is it so different? Because they've not been assimilated. It's been so overwhelming. I mean, in the UK, net migration is now 300,000 a year. This is a tiny island country with a 60 million population, and it's going so fast, there's no chance to assimilate them. So inevitably, they move into these Muslim ghettos, and then you get a situation like you've got in Sweden, where since the 70s, when they swung their doors wide open, rapes are up 1,400%. You get ambulances, fire trucks traveling into these Muslim ghetto areas. They have to leave because they just get pelted with stones and attacked. So you get this increasing balkanization because there's no time for them to assimilate into the culture. And our own leaders are basically committing national suicide and saying you don't have to assimilate. There's no planning. And it's Germany being done as a socialist fetish to mutilate the West. They really yeah. hate the West. They really liberals really want their daughters gang raped and sexually mutilated with bags on their heads. Gloria Steinem, all these people are literally the scum of the earth and enemies. I mean, I'm sorry. They really are. They really are consciously evil, Paul, and the opposite of liberals. How do we stop these fascist Satanists? I, I don't know what you call them when we come back. I mean, these people are the enemy. Final segment. Paul Lewis, five more minutes. Hugh Shardy's coming in with breaking news. I'm settling down some now. I mean, I, I haven't even covered the news yet. It is just the robot cars are coming. It's all been announced. They're going to tax you by the mile, raise your insurance where you can't even have a car. Uh, they're going to take all your jobs away. I mean, it's just hellish. Well, we can now see the clear plan to bring down the West and the rest of the world. I'm not against the third world. I want to help the third world. That's why I'm fighting carbon taxes. It'll kill a billion people in the next decade, many estimates show. And as the third world collapses, as I've been telling you for years, huge migrant waves will hit and will be used to destabilize things further. Then in the next phase, they're going to build armored walls around and not let these people in. They're only bringing in enough to checkmate the voting blocks and create balkanization. It's a management strategy. Then once that's done, you're going to see mega plagues hit the third world and more than 80% of them will be killed. I'd rather industrialize folks, get their birth rate down to 1.5 like it is in the West or 2.1 replacement rate, and it's all live in peace. That's not the globalist plan. I am a worldwide expert on it. I've made films, I've written books, I've interviewed all the experts. This is not hyperbole. You didn't tune into a science fiction movie. We know what's coming. We told you forced inoculation was coming. It's here. We told you robot cars taking over the roads and half the roads being given to them at first. It's been announced today. We told you all of this. We told you the Chinese would start dumping treasury notes. I'm going to be covering that in the next hour. That's happening. I'm not bragging. Uh, there's a major conservative dissent brewing inside the Vatican. Now that the Vatican is coming out basically promoting abortion, global government and communism, and carbon taxes. It is an epic time. I want to get Paul Watson's final comments on this. But just to see these governments against the will of the people, 
Europe's voted 80 plus percent across the board to stop bringing in huge numbers of illegals. Uh, they're attacking police everywhere. They're burning down major cities. But it's the same strategy I'm here with inner city blacks and other, quote, minorities getting foundation manipulated to do the same thing. Or they'll use white supremacist extremists if they're the majority in, in uh, an area of Ukraine to overthrow the government there. It's outside globalists using whatever social problems they've got to do that. I mean, it's like I'm not against pro-Western, historically pro-German Western Ukrainians. I get that the Russians did bad stuff to them, that Lenin and Stalin did. Doesn't matter. George Soros comes in, manipulates you, puts you in power to bring your whole country down. I'm against it. I mean, it doesn't mean I don't get the other cultural issues. I tried to stop the takedown of the Middle East when they kicked out Mubarak and all these other leaders that were working with us. And then they started blowing up all the churches and sending giant hordes of illegals in. Egypt's been allied with the U.S. for 36 years. They now work with the Russians. We lost Egypt. They were able to throw the Al-Qaeda forces out. And Egypt's so freaked out, they got all the documents that Obama, through his cousin, was running the operations. Obama's not just some guy watching ESPN, folks. So let's get that straight. I used to think he was more of a front man. No, he's a mastermind like Lex Luthor or something. I mean, this is like a comic book villain type stuff we're seeing. This is the kind of stuff you'd imagine, you know, Cobra Commander and Destro would pull. But you got to realize that's art imitating life. This is what's happened before historically. I want to get Paul Watson's final comments where we shift gears into some other news, uh, the economic news, you name it. The numbers are in. China in a month alone dumped $94 billion in U.S. Treasuries in one month. Goldman argues real figure might have been $115 billion. I mean, man. Let's uh, go to uh, Anthony Gucciardi to get his take on the open borders, on what's happening. You've got family in Italy. Uh, you've, I didn't even tell you I was going to spring this on. You want to share with them what it's like living at the hands of the precious illegals? Well, I think people are losing their sanity. And I understand the humanitarian part of it saying I want to help all these people because they're starving or whatever and they've been oppressed. I understand all that. But we've lost our sanity, I think, when we start saying just open all the borders and let everyone in. Because, yes, I do have family in Italy, and they tell me that one of the biggest things there is the gypsies. And they live in a nice house in Rome area, but they had to put bars on all their windows because when they would leave or in the middle of the night, they would either throw bricks through the windows and try to get in and steal any electronic they could. Or they use tactics like this is horribly messed up, but they'll have a kid and they'll like burn the kid on purpose so the kid has a real bad burn on his arm or something and say hey please will you help my child please help my child and then you let them into your house and they basically just beat you up and take your stuff I'm gonna fix your so there is a lot of insanity out there and people forget unfortunately history they forget history and they also forget that people have a large degree of evil that they can do as well because we feel bad for all of these people and i'm sure they're great i'm sure they're no other country people. does this the west because it's christian does and the socialists are laughing at us because they're allied with these groups it's like that new but i'm not gonna have a bunch of radical muslims run around and try to attack my daughters and then go thank you while the feminists stand around going good you know i mean it's it's sick this new show on netflix called narcos is actually really good it's about pablo escobar and basically they figure out well selling all these drugs in colombia doesn't make much money if we just destroy the united states and bring it to miami we'll make so much more money and those stupid gringos they'll let us come in there and do anything we want they won't even check us they'll we just walk across the border and that's how he was making 40 million dollars a day because they realized they could jack the prices up, sell it to the stupid Americans, and just bring in truckloads of it. They would just pad their suits with it. Sure. They'd I mean, I'll say this. Money. Give Europe and the West, because I don't like seeing any country destroyed. You know, I feel for the Japanese with their reactors melting down. But if Japan went totally radioactive and was uninhabitable, I'd say let, you know, 20% of the Japanese come over here and, and then other people take them. Because they've got jobs, they want to work hard, they want to assimilate. I'm sorry, we can't take people from first, from old world, third world, third world countries where they were in dirt villages and you chop women's genitals off. We can't take 50 million of them. I'm sorry. Well, I've seen the African immigrants too to different countries and they have signs like, get rid of your law. We want special privileges. We want welfare. We want all this stuff. It's like they're, they're not even coming in and saying, hey, can we please come to your country? They're like, give us everything now.
that's the attitude. They're not coming in saying, hey, we'll do whatever will work as much as we No, no, you ruined us. We want everything you have. It's that's the attitude. And that's the whole liberal sales 